African Telecommunications Union, which is mostly a membership organization of uh, regulators and governments, uh, are equally interested and uh, very much interested in building resilience of the internet in their different countries. And um, it, 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 this, this work is coming as a priority actually for quite a, a number of countries. So moving into 2023, we are, as part of this work, we are also going to be developing some policy documents. Uh, I'm going to describe the two policy documents that we are going to be working on. In fact, we have already started working uh, some work on this with the, our partner, African Telecommunications Union. So uh, while a, a number of our regulators are really interested in this work, they are quite seeking some guidance on how to develop a robust policy framework for for measurements and uh, for measurement and also for building resilience of their internet. So um, this work will focus uh, primarily on developing a policy framework document uh, that will consist of policies that uh, will uh, help uh, countries to improve their internet resilience at national level and also uh, uh, bring that interaction uh, between the private players and also the government players and other non-governmental players that may be providing those services in, in the country. Uh, so the, the idea of uh, this policy document is that once we have a regional uh, policy framework, um, countries or member states can actually uh, use this document to localize, or localize this uh, policy documents uh, so that they do have a, a very clear roadmap on, on, on what uh, they can do to build a, a, a resilient internet um, in their countries. And of course, we are also looking at um, uh, these policy documents as uh, live or living documents that can also adapt to new technologies or even future demand for broadband services in, in, in different countries. So uh, this will be more like a, a, a recommendation uh, or a guiding document uh, that we believe member states will be able to use. Um, in addition to that, we are also going to be focusing on a, a technical document or a technical framework document on building internet resilience in Africa. And again, uh, th this document will sort of describe the technical infrastructure that is required to carry out internet resilience measurement and maintain an active uh, a measurement infrastructure in, in, in countries. He, he, you may remember Kevin mentioning in his presentation some of the key indicators that we are going to be tracking. Uh, I think he mentioned four. So firstly, the infrastructure. Uh, so things like uh, the enabling infrastructure, mobile connectivity and things like that. Uh, the second indicator is around performance. Um, and, and this is a, a very important uh, indicator for quality of measuring quality of service and, 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 and things like that. And we the other indicators also are around enabling te uh, technologies and security. Uh, so DNS uh, ecosystem and uh, the, the routing um, uh, security of, uh, of the network. Again, the technical document will be able to uh, lay out um, the, the required infrastructure or uh, things that you need for, for your and a network to be able to uh, to measure those things. And lastly, uh, of course, local ecosystem and market readiness. So the expectation here is that uh, the, the technical document uh, could be used by either the regulators as well as all the service, uh, the service providers in the country. And what is essentially important in, in, in this case is that we want to be able to plan for the availability of uh, quantitative and qualitative data because uh, the primary um, um, source for this project is actually the data. Using this data, we should be able to make very informed decisions uh, or, and also improve on uh, the services that we are providing to, to, to our communities. So uh, things like quality of service, including, of course, speed, uh, I think uh, this is one key aspect that has been mentioned by a number of uh, countries, uh, reachability, latency, 
uh, as well as uh, you know uh, adoption of uh, IPv6 and uh, DNSSEC. So uh, essentially, it, it, this is uh, what the policy work is going to be, look like. And I, I, I would like to say also, if there are policy makers listening to or joining in this call, uh, and you are particularly from Africa and interested in becoming part of this project, please reach out to us. Uh, or to our partners, um, our partner African Telecommunications Union is going to be also reaching to quite a number of um, some of the policymakers in your countries and regulators to make sure that you are not left behind and so that we continue building the internet resilience in our, in our region in Africa. Um, so let me pause there and uh, back to you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Kirenge, uh, for that uh, breakdown. Uh, on the framework documents that we are, are working on, which uh, we're hoping to conclude in the coming year. Uh, and these will be on the, as uh, Venga mentioned, on the policy and also on, on the technical. Uh, so I'm not seeing any questions um, on the chat. Uh, Mark, I don't know if there are any questions on, on your side. Thanks, Kevin. I'm just looking around the room for raised hands. I see one. Please introduce yourself and then for the question. We've got a few minutes, not long. Okay. Keep it short. Uh, yes, uh, my question is about um, uh, the investments in infrastructure required to uh, ensure resilience. Uh, I know that the Internet Society uh, has uh, uh, promoted the Internet exchange points and all that, but uh, uh, is what uh, it's doing enough? And uh, is it a policy uh, to shy away from... Uh, uh, required investments uh, that ensure stability, resilience, and so on. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for your question. I'll uh, start and also if David Renga you'd like to add, uh, that's welcome also. So um, in terms of the, the infrastructures that uh, facilitate the internet or, may, or improve internet resilience, internet exchange points are one of the more critical ones uh, and we have done a lot of work uh, especially in the African region, to promote uh, the establishment of, of internet exchange points and where the exchange points are uh, to strengthen them. And this has included both uh, training of, of staff and also where necessary uh, supporting equipment, providing uh, routers and so on to uh, facilitate the establishment of internet exchange points. Are, are internet exchange points the only infrastructure needed uh, to improve the connectivity uh, in a country or improve their res uh, resilience? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, what we are hoping to achieve, especially with these framework documents, is to uh, allow those who are in uh, decision-making process to make an informed decision on what they need to do in their countries to improve the resilience. So uh, the information that you'll find, for example, if you go to the uh, PASS dashboard, uh, you'll see countries scoring very highly in some, uh, in some metrics and then very low in some metrics. And why we're doing that, why we're showing that in that manner is to show the regulators, the policymakers, even the network operators and in infrastructure providers that in, in this area, in your country, uh, these are the areas you need to strengthen in order to improve uh, the resilience. So um, we believe you cannot improve something without measuring it. And that's why we've uh, gone actively to try and carry out these measurements, present this information in a very easy to understand manner. So uh, when you go to the, the Pulse um, uh, dashboard, whether you're a policymaker, you'll see a very uh, simple to understand graph that says, you know, this is how you're scoring on infrastructure for your country. This is how you're scoring on performance. This is how you're scoring on security. This is how you're scoring on market readiness. And uh, we're hoping that we then, you know, inspire conversations and, uh, you know, allow those who need to make informed decisions that this is where we need to improve. Um, Kevin, David, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin, sorry to interrupt. We got, we're running out of time and I, we've got one okay. question in the room. Can we go to that now? Okay, that's fine. Is that right. Yep, okay. Thanks. Hi, um, it's Chris Buckridge here from RIPE NCC. Um, I, I noticed RIPE Atlas is not listed there, I, although I'm sure that there's a possibility to use it a bit as well. But um, one point that I come from that is that RIPE Atlas, it, we're, we're aware, doesn't have um, a huge amount of coverage in Africa. And I was wondering if you found that there was a challenge in 
um, getting the measurement infrastructure or was, was there a sort of a need for more measurement infrastructure in place to really make this work um, robust and easy or, or you, have you found it okay in that sense? Yeah. Okay. So we so for for right actually what we uh, I didn't manage to get into the details of it, but we had look at uh, the RIPE Atlas, a uh, very good infrastructure for the prototype measurement uh, infrastructure that I mentioned. We actually trying to have a a device that can allow both uh, throughput tests, uplink downlink speeds, and also the a software right RIPE Atlas uh, probe. So. Uh, we are trying actually to use uh, right uh, the main reason we are experimenting with the prototype uh, measurement platform is that uh, from our analysis we felt there are not enough active measurement um, locations in in africa so it was very challenging to get um, live information of what's going on in a country so that's why we experimented with the, with the prototype but our our approach is not to recreate what is there we're definitely looking at, at right we've even been in touch with a number of uh, people from from right and it is something we want to incorporate as some of the DNS measurements we want to carry out. So I think uh, I'd like to talk to you maybe after this, maybe uh, Mark can share my email with you, then we can carry on this conversation. Kevin, I think we can squeeze in one last question uh, before sure. we close. Please sure. introduce yourself and then. Uh, hello. Good. Hello, good morning. I'm Pujani from Indian Society Sri Lanka Chapter President. Uh, it's a very valuable presentation. Uh, so, Internet Society, uh, uh, so Sri Lanka also facing these days huge economic problem, and so, uh, Sri Lanka you know, also the same problem, critical infrastructure problem uh, issue. Uh, so, we uh, conducted uh, many programs for youth uh, uh, as a uh, workshop of how to become an entrepreneur using internet and uh, school programs uh, because the uh, most of time uh, they are uh, facing issue of uh, infrastructure problem uh, so they can't uh, continue their uh, work uh, this uh, critical problem of sri lanka thank you Uh, okay, um, not sure what the qu question is there, but uh, if it's in regards to perhaps how you know these measurements that we have shown could help um, other regions, we are looking to explore or expand these measurements to other regions. We've just carried out the measurements in Africa, uh, but we are doing a pilot in um, the University of West Indies for the Caribbean to carry out uh, similar measurements there. And as part of the plans for 2023, we want to expand these uh, measurements to uh, you know, globally. So it may be uh, in, by some point next year, it will be very uh, possible for you to view this information on uh, Sri Lanka, on the dashboard that we have, and it will show the areas of improvement that, uh, because it, first we need to understand uh, in any country, what are the areas of improvement and then action can be taken. So I hope I've answered uh, that question, but please take my email address if uh, you like more information. Okay, Kevin, uh, I think we have to um, close the session now, uh, the talk. Uh, so thanks to everybody in the room who participated and thanks for coming early, so early and uh, contributing with very interesting questions. So uh, I hand back to you, Kevin, to close it formally. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you uh, to all the attendees. Uh, David Brenka, any final thoughts uh, you'd like to share briefly before you end up? Uh, not from me, maybe David. No, just thank you for all who came to our uh, session. Uh, this is a very important project for Africa and we hope that uh, you will, you know, you will contribute to it. We are open to any uh, contribution from the private sector, from regulators, etc. So we look forward to work uh, with all of you uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of the IGF. Back to you, Mark. <laughs>